In this video, I'll be first of all going through the syllabus of APM, and then I'll take it through to the exam structure of APM, and then showing you the uh, computer-based environment of what it looks like, and the key to exam success of this paper. So let's first of all focus on the syllabus of APM. The syllabus has been divided into part A up to part E. Part A is going to be focusing on strategic planning and control. I'm sure that you've studied strategy in your paper uh, Business and Technology or BT in your previous F1 and also the SBL strategic business leader that you've studied quite lots of models of how we're going to set up our strategies, for example, using um, the, for example, the Porter's generic uh, strategic models, or the, or the, for example, the Ansoff growth vector matrix, and so on and so forth. But unlike in the previous of your studies in your BT or the SBO, APM is more focusing on controlling the strategies that you've made and make sure that you can implement these strategies successfully in your business. So either in the private sector or the public sector organisations. The key to answer these type of questions is to make sure that you've got the right numbers to support your strategies. So possibly in combination with quite a lot of statistical techniques for example, one of the techniques that the examiner uh, favours is EVA, or Economic Value Added Technique. And also you need to apply, for example, the Key Performance Indicators, or KPIs, into making sure that your strategy can be implemented successfully in your business. Part boy is going to be focusing on risks and uncertainties. Again, we'll be looking at expected values and perhaps the maxim, max, maximum, these kind of stuff from your previous studies. I'm sure that will be the management accounting paper or the performance management paper. That's the part boy. And part C is going to be focusing on information systems. So in essence, what the examiner tends to do is to mix the part C and even part A and boy or all other parts together. And to a single question, for example, uh, for example, the question one, that the examiner give you a large case or big case with lots and lots of information in there. And what you have to do is to show them a report. So, for instance, the examiner may ask you about the, uh, whether the information system or the performance management information system is good or not um, in this particular business. And what you have to do is to show them with your evidence uh, taken from the case, applying your judgment and justification so that you can uh, be successful in this paper. As uh, so you can see, part dot as well. It got strategic performance measurement. It's not just for the tactical operations point of view, it's from a strategic point of view. Which means we have to make sure our strategy could be implemented successfully. And finally, we'll be recapping, for example, the balance scorecard and so on and so forth, and how to predict corporate failure. For example, one of the models is we're going to use, we're going to calculate the Z score. As we can see, the syllabus has been divided into part A up to E, but from my perspective and my experience, is that the key to pass the APM, unlike in other P-level studies, is not to go through the part A up to E in quite a lot of detail, because as you can see, the syllabus part A up to part E, there will be almost nothing new. You've studied these knowledge from a previous management accounting and performance management studies. 
And from my perspective, the APM, first of all, you have to read quite a lot of good articles from different sources. So for example, one of my favorite websites is Financial Times or FT. Read the articles, for example, from strategies of different companies or how it may fail and how we're going to control it. So read them. Second, read a lot of articles about how real businesses will set their KPIs to monitor their performance and make your own summary. Because, for example, from part A up to part A, we'll be covering things like life cycle costing, target costing again, or perhaps the total quality management. But trust me, these are the stuff that you studied in other uh, papers, for example, in management accounting, and also performance management paper. There's nothing new. So knowing the theory, for example, in just a few minutes, watching our videos, and then quickly reading the articles from different sources would really help your exam success, would really help to achieve quality marks in the APM exam. At the same time, you have to practice quite a lot of past examination questions to get a feel for how the examiner would test different topics. For example, in relation to transfer pricing, uh, that we've studied in the performance management before. And of course, in our course, we'll be summarizing how transfer pricing topic could be tested in a variety of ways in this particular paper. So this paper, total marks is 100. You, ne you need to get at least 50 to pass this paper. The exam is 195 minutes and I'm going to show you the deadline approach to uh, plan the deadline for each requirement to plan uh, your time carefully so you can uh, answer this paper uh, in a given time set. This exam will be run in the computer based environment and that's why I'm going to show you what the exam looks like. For example, in the exam, you will see the examiner has provided you with quite a lot of exhibit. Exhibit is also known as attachment. So as you can see, the exhibit includes the complete information and the sort of things that you may bring in your answer or EVA the critical success factors or the uh, what sort of things that, they come, uh, that the business may miss so they come to a fail or KPIs, how we're going to implement them correctly and also other information appendix calculations as well and then you need to click onto requirement worth of 50 marks remember the exam has been divided into part A and part B part A, one question worth of 50 marks and part B there will be another two questions in the part B worth of 25 marks each and any topics may come up of course as you can see the computer based environment first of all you can see on the right hand side the examiner give you a flavor of what the exhibits on the left hand side means and then you're going to click on the requirements. Remember, when you click on the requirements, you will see, let's see, first of all, we're going to write a report to the CEO. Explain the EVA, KPIs, and other information proposed uh, by, the, uh, by the examiner. For example, part four, the impact of the proposed new information on the three improvement project. So if I were you, when I see this requirement, the first thing is to use the function copy and paste. Just copy all those requirements, excluding professional marks of course. Just copy these 
to your response area. For example, clicking on the word processor, and then you're going to copy and paste the requirements in there. That's the first step. The second step is to break down each of the requirement using words. And here, because it's showing you, asking you about the EVA, uh, perhaps you have to calculate quite a lot of things in the Excel spreadsheet. And that's why you're going to show all your workings from your spreadsheet for the calculations of EVA. At the same time, there will be three improvement projects, and then in your answer, you should uh, include the answer plan. For example, the project one, two, three, showing your answer clearly into three projects. But don't show the plan to the examiner in the question one because there will be four professional marks regarding the format uh, of the report, whether this is right, and also the structure and clarity of your answer. It means it really depends on who marks your script. And of course, within that full professional marks, being realistic, most students cannot achieve four out of four, but you can easily achieve two out of four. So be realistic and make sure that the format study from the past examination paper or from our course. At the same time, showing your answer clearly, answering all parts of the questions so you can score two. And that's enough from my perspective. I'm more focusing your answer onto the quality parts, into the part one, two, three and four. And that's quite important. So, the next thing is with regards to the number of marks, applying to your answer how many points that you should write each and every time. For example, in here, three improvement projects, because it's three improvement projects, and then I will divide 15 marks into three projects, which means the project one, there will be five marks, another five and five marks for the two projects. But five marks, how many points you should write? Because at this level, you should be expected to comment clearly on the matters given to you. And here, five marker question, I would possibly include three clear and short paragraphs perhaps two sentences mixing together into a single paragraph into three points. And make sure that your uh, points are absolutely clear with justifications, possibly using the word because and explaining the implications and even cross-referencing to the case. And that's the reason why when you are reading the case, you can see, you can highlight uh, using your favorite color uh, so that you can therefore cross reference your answer to the question, and that's quite important. And on to your next page, I'm showing you also for the, for example, the calculations uh, and the, for example, the, uh, the common parts, approximately two to three marks per point. But not many students can achieve the full marks, for example, two marks per point or three marks per point and so on. But largely, they may achieve, for example, 1.5 marker per point. And make sure that each point you're going to write will be sufficiently high quality. A lot of um, the APM uh, students fail the exam was simply because they write too many points. But each and every point, using a very short and simple sentence, that doesn't really help. And that's the reason why uh, we have to be very careful here. Don't write too many points, but make sure that each of your point, the quality is good, so you can pass this paper easily. 
So that's the end of this video. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the course or in the next video. We'll be going through the entire syllabus and then we'll be mixing with lots of exam standard questions as well. Okay, so see you in the next section. Bye. A P C accounting for your future.